Okay, so who really won the War of 1812? First of all, a quick recap of the background for the war and its belligerents. The two major and official belligerents were the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland and the United States of America. The war was initiated by the United States because of a number of grievances with the United Kingdom. The major of these were, in no particular order, prevention of free American trade due to Britain enforcing an embargo on enemy ports as a part of the Napoleonic Wars, impressment of American sailors into the British Royal Navy, and alleged support to Indian tribes raiding American settlers on the American Western Frontier. Britain in 1812 was already at war and had been for a long time. It was dueling with Napoleon's France for domination in Europe. To achieve this goal, a lot of sacrifices had to be made. One way Britain sought to defeat France and her allies was to make sure that they received no income from trade by sea and could not receive any supplies from overseas colonies. This went as far as to prevent neutral ships from trading with France or her allies. This, of course, angered the Americans, who felt that they should be free to trade with whomever they wanted, but Britain at this point in time was adamant that this was a necessary sacrifice in order to win the conflict. The British were blockading European ports, and it was no easy task maintaining such extensive blockades. Luckily, Britain had the largest navy in the world to achieve this, but even so, this navy had to be expanded and stretched very thinly to blockade so many ports while at the same time keeping its own trade safe from enemy raiding. In addition, several years of war had taken its toll on the navy, because even though new ships could be built at a steady pace, sailors were harder to come by. This had led to the British policy of impressment, by which people, particularly sailors of the merchant fleet, could be forced into the Royal Navy. Men were snatched up in ports or at sea and essentially kidnapped in order that the Royal Navy could fill its vacant positions. The diplomatic issue with America arose because Americans were also impressed into the Royal Navy under this policy, even though the United States was neutral with regard to the Napoleonic conflict. American sailors were simply snatched off their merchant ships and it could take a very long time for an impressed individual to actually prove that he was indeed American. However, you can also see this from the British perspective. If they allowed the excuse, don't impress me, I am an American, soon every sailor they met would claim to be an American. It was simply bad luck for American sailors that they spoke the same language as the British. Furthermore, in the years leading up to the conflict, the United States had had its eyes set on further westward expansion of the country, with settlers expanding the frontier ever further west. However, in the areas around the Great Lakes, they met with Indian resistance to this expansion in the form of raiding parties. The Indians in the area had formed a coalition and were on relatively friendly terms with the British, who were in control of Canada and didn't mind having an Indian nation as a buffer zone between themselves and the United States. American settlers were sure that the British actively supported the Indians with weapons and ammunition, which understandably created further tension between Washington and London. Another possible cause for the war was that the Americans would prefer to have the British out of North America altogether, and thus annex Canada. The United States finally declared war in June of 1812. I will not go into that much detail concerning the war itself, suffice it to say that the war mainly consisted of American incursions into Canada, which were repulsed, and British attacks on the American mainland, which were likewise repulsed. The British aim was not to recolonize the United States, as this would have been a drain on resources, which were scarce at the time, but rather to force the Americans to sign a quick peace on their terms. The British formally allied themselves with the Indian Confederation, and the Confederation aided the British in the disruption of American supplies and thus in the defense of Canada. However, in 1813, the Indian Confederation lost a decisive battle in which the leader was mortally wounded, which spelled the end of the Confederation. The peace treaty between the United States and the United Kingdom was signed on December 24th, 1814 and stated that all occupied territories should be given back so pre-war boundaries would be re-established. The treaty also established commissions for formalizing a border between Canada and the United States. So what did the treaty say about impressment, American trade or westward expansion? 
These were the primary reasons behind the war and the treaty should surely tell us who won based on terms concerning these issues, right? Well, it says nothing about those issues. Because when the war ended, these were no longer issues at all. Britain was now once again at peace with France and no longer needed neither to impose embargoes nor to impress sailors. Furthermore, the Indian Confederacy had been defeated, so American westward expansion was no longer hindered. Now, to be fair, there was actually a clause in the treaty stating that the United States pledged to give back all tribal lands to their respective tribes. However, officially, the land around the Great Lakes was American and had been since the Treaty of Paris in 1783. So while the Treaty of Ghent stipulated that the tribes should receive back the land they were entitled to, the sentiment in the United States was that this did not include any land given to the United States in 1783. At any rate, the Confederation was dead, and the individual tribes were much easier for the US to deal with. Britain had wanted a buffer between Canada and the United States, but with the Treaty of Ghent setting up commissions for formalizing a border, and with the successful defense of Canada during the war, American westward expansion was no longer perceived as a threat for British Canadian territory. So in the Treaty of Ghent between His Britannic Majesty and the United States of America, there is no defeat part. Both sides, in fact, can claim the war as a victory of sorts. For the United Kingdom, the war was a mere sideshow to a much larger conflict with France and if British embargo policy against France meant having to fight a few more nations, then so be it. Defeating Napoleon was the ultimate goal and they achieved this goal. Furthermore, British sovereignty of Canada was cemented and Canadians could take pride that they defended the country from American invasion attempts. For the United States, they could first and foremost celebrate that they had repulsed British attacks from their mainland. Furthermore, they could take some pride in the fact that they had fought for the rights of their citizens when this was infringed upon. And finally, they had defeated the Indian Confederation and opened the way for further westward expansion. There was one party, however, who could not claim a victory in any sense of the word, and that was the Confederation of Indian Tribes. The confederation had fallen apart and each tribe now had to negotiate a separate peace with the Americans, many of which were granted reservations west of the Mississippi. In hindsight, this confederation of tribes was probably the last feasible chance of forming an Indian nation in North America. Had a few key events played out differently, perhaps there would today be an independent nation state called the United Nation of Shawnee or something similar along the banks of the Great Lakes. So to sum up and answer the question I asked in the beginning of the video, who really won the War of 1812? Well, both the United Kingdom and the United States can be claimed as winners of this conflict. Only the Indian tribes involved were definitely on the losing side. Well, thank you for watching and feel free to comment if you think I missed something important. Uh, if you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe.